A for anterior uveitis or iritis. So you can see the cervical spine is hyperextension. Turn back, turn back. Yes, yes, sir. So turn back. The sound of tenderness. So I need to feel the spine. You, you see the uh, great distance is here. So this is the flexion movement. I can do it. So this is called the floor finger distance. You need to put your hands and then you just make a good mark here. The vehicle impasse impulse with the thrusting displaced apex weight and also put the stasis to get the early diastolic mark. Put your hands like this and you tell him just take a deep breath in and out. Dalon percussion and no bruise overlying the spleen. Amyloidosis, which is the secondary complication. And you tell him take a deep breath in and out. Once again, the critical diagnosis of this man is pulmonary fibrosis. And I can listen. My critical diagnosis of this man, of the gentleman, is Hello, my dear doctor. You'll be glad to know that the case that we are discussing here is an ankylosing spondylitis, my dear. Ankylosing spondylitis is one of the most important cases that will be encountered, usually in station 5. My dear, in the station 5, it's just a brief clinical consultation, my dear. And under the headings of rheumatology, that you have seen that the station 5 brief clinical consultation. And under the headings of the rheumatology. Usually the scenario is posed like the shortness of breath and exhaustion. This gentleman presented with the shortness of breath and exhaustion. And now you have to take the history, clinical examination, manage the patient concerns. Where is the station 5, my dear? And these ankylosing spondylitis can be presented in a variety of stations, my dear. Including, you see, there's a station 1 abdomen. But this is a little bit rare. And you'll have the good discussion in the spleen abdomen and you'll see the videos as well. So here is a hepatosplenomegaly due to amyloidosis, secondary to ankylosing spondylitis. Means the ankylosing spondylitis complicated by amyloidosis is a secondary amyloidosis because of the connective tissue disorders and that leads to the hepatosplenomegaly. So these are under the headings of the spleen abdomen that are already discussed in the stage, station 1 abdomen. So once again, the Station 1 respiratory also, that the, you'll get the case of the ankylosing spondylitis in station 1 respiratory. Similarly, the shortness of breath and exhaustion, or maybe the respiratory station that you enter the room, you have seen the spot, the diagnosis in the ankylosing spondylitis, the features might end, made the diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis. So, pulmonary fibrosis due to ankylosing spondylitis. And once again, the ankylosing spondylitis can be present in station 3 cardiology, my dear. So, cardiology is single valvular disease. Severe aortic regurgitation due to ankylosing spondylitis. So, a core of uh, features and the complication of the ankylosing spondylitis, my dear. Already you know about it. Now, what I'm going to do, my dear, this is very much important. The station 5, brief clinical consultation. Yes, my dear. So, you'll have the very good discussions, my dear, the, in BCC, how the ankylosing spondylitis can be presented or can be in your exam, my dear. You'll have the lecture zone and also some of the important tips and tricks and how to examine the ankylosing spondylitis fully, my dear, including the definitely the ankylosing spondylitis, the skeletal features, with the musculoskeletal examinations, and after that, you will have the abdominal examinations, means the in station one under the headings of station one, and also in station one respiratory as well, the, the examination of the respiratory system to get the diagnosis of the pulmonary fibrosis. And also in cardiology to get the diagnosis in atrial aortic regurgitation spine. In a variety of ways that you'll get the ankylosing spondylitis, my dear. So what I'm going to do, you'll see, my dear, the station five brief clinical consultation, the rheumatology, basically the skeletal features and musculoskeletal examinations, and followed by definitely you'll have the abdomen under the headings of hepatosplenomegaly, and then the respiratory, and then Definitely the cardiology. A very good discussion that you will have by the face by face. I know, and I hope and believe that my dear, after having this case of ankylosing spondylitis, if you have the case in your exam, my dear, you will do the best, my dear. Best of luck. Enjoy the case, my dear. 
and definitely make some notes on the SS boxes that the boxes are provided to you. You will do the best, my dear. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. The station five, you'll get the scenario outside the room. And this man here is written that Mr. X, the 50 years old, has increasing difficulties mobilizing and performing his job. So if you get a case like that just before entering the room, then you need to think the first diagnosis the ankylosing spondylitis. Yes, my dear doctor, if the case is something like that, the main concern is the unable to perform his own job and also difficulties in mobilizing. So you need to focus on the full ankylosing spondylitis, full assessment that you need to do. Means that you need to examine and you need to talk the head to toe, whatever the problems he has. Means the ankylosing spondylitis, all the complications that you need to evaluate all them together. So yes, my dear doctor, as because we already know that ankylosing spondylitis is a seronegative spondyloarthritis. And this seronegative spondyloarthritis having the, all the A's bundle pack that we need to remember, all the A's that you need to know. So if you start from the eyes, that there will be the A for anterior uveitis or iritis. That is nothing but the red eyes or the painful red eyes. And if you get down, to the lungs, there is an apical zone lung fibrosis. So once again, A4, apical zone lung fibrosis. If you get down to the heart, then once again, the rule of A, A4, AV block, that can be first degree, second degree, third degree, AV block. And as I said, that the bradycardia is a feature or maybe the pacemaker scar and the pacemaker box will be there. And the heart complication, once again, the A4 aortic regurgitation. So you'll get the mama for the early diastolic mama the left heart into the space. And also, you'll get the pulse, the high volume collapsing pulse. And next to the heart, another heart is the A4, amyloidosis. Once again, I say the amyloidosis equal to RCM plus NOS plus AHS. What does it mean? The amyloidosis equal to RCM restrictive cardiomyopathy. So in that case, you'll get the apex bit will be the heaving in nature. And then the NOS in the nephrotic syndrome, urine dipstick, will give the idea that the massive proteinuria and the nail, you'll get the leukonychia and the leg edema, you'll get the leg edema. So these are the features that you can expect. And next is an abdominal examination, the hepatosphenomegaly, that you'll get might have for the amyloidosis. So yes, once again, that you come back from the anterior eviitis, apical zone fibrosis, avinodal block, aortic regurgitation, and then amyloidosis that leads to the restrictive cardiomyopathy in the heart, and A for rule getting down to the abdomen, then you get the hepatosplenomegaly. It means the amyloidosis equal to hepatosplenomegaly and the nose nephrotic syndrome and the restrictive cardiomyopathy. And you get down to the thighs and the legs. These are important matters that you need to know. It means the joints is really important. It means in encouraging spondylitis, the axial joints is involved. It means the spine, with the spondylitis, with the spine joints is involved. It means the cervical spine, lumbar spine, the whole spine will be involved axial joints along with the SI joints, the sacroiliac joints. Other than the axial joints, the appendicular joints are also involved. We call it the asymmetrical oligoarthritis. So there will be the asymmetrical oligoarthritis. We call the mono is a single and the oligo is a two to five joints and poly is a more than five means the six joints. So there may be the small joints in the hands or maybe the right ankle or maybe the left uh, wrist joint or with the left knee joint. So in an asymmetrical varieties, oh, you are trying this, maybe present. So arthritis, A4 arthritis, legs, the A4 arthritis rule. So here's the actual joints arthritis and also asymmetrical oligoarthritis. And getting down to the legs, these are enthesitis. A4 enthesitis, yes, you can say. So A4 enthesitis means that the Achilles tendinitis and also plantar fasciitis, there is lots of A's. And last is the coda A, equina A syndrome. is a coda equina syndrome. So head to toe, these are the features that you can expect in a patient with the encouraging spondylitis. But this gentleman having a concern with the mobility problems. So we need to show all the features of encouraging spondylitis and I will show the, all the possible features that he has of the encouraging spondylitis rather than going through the, the systematic ways of station 5 approach. But the getting the findings in your hands that you can formulate the things in the real exams and, and making the diagnosis and saying the examiner and saying the examiner and also your patients as well. So that we can get the full marks in station five, 28 out of 28 marks, my dear. 
So what you need to do, you need to look at him to see at the general survey and to see that any of the walking aids that he has and also the, the prism glass that is really important. And immediately after that you have seen the surroundings, bedside surroundings, then you need to look at the eyes and you can ask him, is there any painful red eye? So he doesn't have the red eye, no painful red eye. And also to, to just open his body. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK, SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations. 500 plus hours video lectures. 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumanta Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole lifetime. It will be helpful for us. Sir, could you just open the ball? So we can, we can get the findings in our hands. So yes, that we can see the psoriatic rashes because the seronegative spondyl arthritis also has with the sound extra articular manifestations. So yes, the psoriasis skin rash may be associated or maybe present in that case. So you can do just, can you do like this for me, sir? And you need to look at the, yes, these areas and these areas for the psoriatic skin rashes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And you can go back to him just to see the, back of the ear and back of the ear and the below the hairline scalp so he doesn't have any of the psoriatic skin rashes so what we need to do we need to look at him that the his the spine and everything at general survey and i'd like to sh sh see him that the that little bit walking just walk then back i'd like to see the spine the full spine and the movement of the neck and the lumbar spine all together so I'd like to tell him, sir, will you please just stand up for me and just walk for me. So I'd like to show his spine. So you can see the cervical spine is hyperextension and also the loss of normal lumbar lordosis. So you can see a question mark posture that the gentleman has. So yes, there's nothing but the consistent and encouraging spondylitis that he has. So now let's see, he will walk for me. Just walk and now we can look at him. So. So he's walking, so we can see the, the posture at him. So we can see the back, so now we can see the posture. Yes. So turn, turn back, sir, now, turn back for me, turn back, turn back, yes. Yes, sir. So turn back. So we can see the spine as well as the movement all together. Turn back, turn back, sir, for me. Once again, come, 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 come. Walk, walk for me, walk for me. Walk for me. Yes. Now turn back once again, turn back. Yes. Bus. Turn back, sir, for me, turn back. Wait, 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 sir, turn back. So, yes, sir, what we can observe that he has got the, he has a cushion mark posture and the ported belly as well altogether. So yes. So this is nothing but the locomotor system examination and that starts with the look, feel and move. Did you already observe him and the cushion mark posture with the restricted movements and uh, hyperextension of the cervical spine and also loss of lumbar, lumbar lordosis. So this is look that we have found that he has got the Ankylosing spondylitis with a protuberant abdomen that he has. And now the feel. Feel is really important to see any of the tenderness of the spine that he has or not. So we need to turn him. Sir, can you just turn back? Yes. Turn, turn. Like this, yes. Now I'd like to feel of your spine. If you have any of the pain, just let me know, sir. Just feel the spine. 
Is there, is there any pain, sir? Pain? Oh. Which part? Mm. Here is a pain. Yeah. So he is feeling the pain. Yes, he has got the pain. So he has a spinal pain. He has some of the tenderness. So I need to feel the spine. So this is the tenderness that you need to look for. So there is a look, feel, and now that we'll go for the movement. So sir, uh, what we are going to do now, we'll see the six important movements of the cervical spine. How much and to what extent they're restricted that we can observe here. So we, we need to tell him, just sir, could you please just like this, do like this for me? So you can see I can move my chin and very close to my chest but he is unable to do so. Do it, do it more, do it more. So you, you see the uh, great distance is here. So this is the flexion movement. Now the extension. So can you do like this for me? More, more, more. So see, I can, I can do more, but he is unable to do so. So really restricted movement, the flexion and extension altogether. Now, sir, can you just Touch this ear with, with this shoulder, so like this, like this. So see, I, I can do it more, but he cannot do so. Now right side, right side, can you do like this for me? Right. Could you please touch with your right ear with the shoulder? So really a great distance rather than me, you see, I can do it. Yes. Now the lateral rotation. So just turn round to the move your head on the left side like this i can turn around you can see i can turn around and you can see the difference is me with him and now on the right side now on the right side you can see i can move but he, he is not moving the way that i'm moving so the six important movements the six important movements of the cervical spine is really restricted the flexion extension lateral rotation and the left and right side movement my dear. So the six important movements are really restricted in the cervical, cervical spine that you already observed. So yes, now we look for the spine movement of the lumbar spine movement. So we'll tell him, sir, could you do like this for me? Move, move. So I can do it more, you can see. I can do it more and more and more. I can do it. I can do it. So this is called the floor finger distance. So you can see the difference is the floor finger distance is more than that of me. You can see I can do it more, more. So there's a forward flexion and the backward movements. So I can do it more. So definitely he has got the restricted movement. Now the lateral bending. With the lateral bending, so I can do it more. You can see I can do it more. Now right, right inside, right. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations. 500 plus hours video lectures. 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole life. I can do it more. Yes. So now with the lateral rotation that we can see that I can do it. With me that you can compare. And now you see that I can do it more. So yes. So these are the six important movements that we have done that he has got the restricted movement in the lumbar spine as well. Now we'll do the modified Schober's test. That's very important to, to see the restricted lumbar spine movement as well. So these are modified Schober's tests. I'd like to make a mark point here. So the, there's a dimple of venous and then you need to put your hands and then you just 
make a good mark here. So you need to give the 10 centimeter above a marking and the 5 centimeter below here. I'm just putting mark over the cloth, but you shouldn't do that. So now we need to tell him just could you please without bending your knee just touch your feet just bend 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 just a minute uh, yes bend bend now bend 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 more bend more bend more 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 so this is increasing only the 16 17 maximum so yes thank you very much so in a normal person that that is 15 centimeter in total in a normal person with the banding that goes more than 20 centimeter means more than five centimeter extension of the lumbar spine or interspinal space altogether but here is only one centimeter in increase this is said that if it is less than five centimeter is increased so this is the shoulder stress or modified shoulder stress is positive so his shoulder stress is positive so this is the finger floor movements so if you can Okay, you see, haha, <laughs> this is around 50 centimeter. So finger floor distance is 50 centimeter. So in a normal person, the finger floor distance is less than 10 centimeter. In his case, the 50 centimeter is so increased. So the 10 centimeter. So now we are seeing the chest expansion that you need to measure. You see, this is around 99 centimeter so you can tell him take a deep breath in more so this is no or less movement it is less than 2.5 centimeter is positive so yes yes his movement on the chest is reduced so sir can you just make it make it more more close to the wall so this is we call the occiput wall distance usually zero if I, if I can touch, it, it just can you go there? That's right, sir. So we can compare with him. So you see the, the long distances. So th that should be zero. You see, if I, if I touch, I can touch. I can touch. Is it locating here that I can touch? I can touch, yes. So I can touch, but he cannot touch. You see, this is zero. He, he has got the long distances. So this is occiput wall distance zero. Chest expansion is a 2.5 centimeter, more than 2.5 centimeter chest expansion should be. And the shoulder stress, more than 20 centimeter. And the finger floor distance, more than 10 centimeter. So 0, 2.5, 15, uh, 20, and 10 centimeter that you need to remember. So yes, my dear doctor, this is the station 5. So whenever the scenario says that he has got the increasing difficulty in mobilizing and performing his job, that you need to do all the maneuvers and showing all the features altogether. So I will listen very carefully. Then you need to know the 0, 2.5, 5, and 10. What I said, the 0, 2.5, 5, and 10. What does this 0 mean? 0 means O for 0 is O, so the occiput. So this occiput wall distance, that should be 0. It is increased. So definitely the number one findings that you found. And it's a 2.5 with the chest expansion. So normally more than 2.5. If it is less than 2.5, yes, this is also positive test. And then 5 means the showburst test. It means the 15 centimeters is normal. And more than 5 centimeters added means the total 20 centimeters. More than 20 to 20 centimeters is normal. But less than, in his case, yes, only 1 centimeter. So this positive show was test as well. So five centimeters, as I said. And last, the 10 is a floor. 10 is a floor. Yes, it means the finger to flow distance is less than 10 centimeters. In his case, the 50 centimeters. So yes, so you need to remember the 0, 2.5, 5, and 10. Then you need to show the examiners. These are the things along with the cervical spine movement and the lumbar spine movement altogether. Showing them that yes, the diagnosis is done. And kind of explain like this. Yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. What you need to do, you need to explain him regarding the ankylosing spondylitis. And after that, what do the management plan that you need to do that? 
Sometimes in the station five, the scenario will be something like that. The man is presented with the shortness of breath on exertion. So yes, my dear doctor, he entered in the room that you have seen. He has got the ankylosing spondylitis. Now the shortness of breath on exertion, the differential diagnosis that you need to think about. Number one, the apical joint fibrosis. And secondly, the heart disease. The heart disease includes maybe the aortic regurgitation leading to the chronic heart failure, the number one, or maybe the restrictive cardiomyopathy having heart failure, or maybe the third AV block leads to the heart failure. So yes, the heart disease, and the first one, what I said, the lung disease. So shortness of breath on exhaustion, what you need to do, you need to lie back in 45 degree angle, then you need to examine the pulse for the high volume collapsing pulse for the aortic regurgitation, and you need to put the stethoscope and also put the hands for the apical, apical impulse with the thrusting displaced apex bit and also put the stethoscope to get the early diastolic marma. Along with the findings, as I said, the first degree, second degree, third degree, every block, any of the scar mark for the pacemaker or maybe the restricted cardiomyopathy for the AICD pacemaker scar. So these are the cardiovascular system examination. And I also put the stethoscope directly onto the apical zones to get the crackles, to get the findings. So findings will be directing to what is the likely diagnosis and the patient may be concerned with the heart failure. So yes, my dear doctor, that whenever the station five, the cases with the shortness of breath on exertion, then you need to think about the lungs disease first, apical fibrosis, evidenced by the crackles, or the second differential diagnosis, the heart disease, the aortic regurgitation, maybe the severe aortic regurgitation leading to the left heart failure. These are two important diagnoses you need to think about and you need to make the patient lie back on, onto the couch and 45 degree angle you need to put the stethoscope onto the apical zone and put the stethoscope onto the left lower sternal zone for getting the murmur of early diastolic murmur and also the features of severity like the high volume collapsing pass and the thrusting displaced apex pain and also the short EDM and also the lungs crackles the basal crackles for the heart failure features. So yes, my dear doctor, I hope that the encouraging spondylitis with all the complications and with all the possible examinations that we learned from this case and formulate all them together based on the scenario that we need to approach to this case and asking him regarding the concerns, what is really his concern, then management them and make a good planning further will be helpful, my dear. I hope that, my dear, you enjoyed Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Very good. So, sir, my name is Dr. Sa, one of the PACES candidates here today. I have been asked to examine your tummy. So, sir, what I'm going to do, I'd like to have a very good look first, feel, tapping, and listen to your tummy. So, do you have any pain right at this moment at your tummy? No. All right. So, during this examination, if you have any of the pain and discomfort, just let me, I'll stop at that moment. Is it all right? All right. Thank you very much. Yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. You entered in the room that you start with the deep bundle backs all together and greetings, introduction, instruction, pain position and pose up. So you have done everything and position is lying flat for the abdomen examination and pose up means the expose and you need to expose him. So you need to tell him, sir, would you please just open your shot? Is it all right? All right. Yes. So sir, could you please just sit forward for me? Good I'm way. helping you. I'm helping you. So I, I understand that you have some of the problem, right? Mobility. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations. 500 plus hours video lectures. 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole life. Seat forward for me. Yes. 
Yes, yes. Yes. So I can help you to put off your shirt. Now put off your shirt. So yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, my dear doctor, just look at him whenever you're just putting off your dress and shot, and we can observe him that the hyperextension of the cervical spine, and you can see the loss of normal lumbar lordosis and making a question mark posture. It's a sport diagnosis for the enchylogic spondylitis. And if you just tell him, just can you just turn your head on the left side? Left side, okay. And then on now right hand side, right side now. Yes. So you can see some of the restricted movement of his neck. So yes, my dear doctor, immediately after entering the room, the station one abdomen. And whenever you feel that this man would have the difficulty in moving his the neck joint, the spine joints, and having typically the question mark posture, having the hyperextension of the cervical spine and also the loss of number, normal lordosis of the lumbar spine, and with the protuberant abdomen is a typical and the spot diagnosis for the ankylosing spondylitis. So yes, my dear doctor, this is knowing the facts, the ankylosing spondylitis. So Whenever you are focusing in the station one abdomen, then you need to examine the abdomen. So you need to anticipate fast what things that you are expecting in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis. So in an ankylosing spondylitis, the rule of A in abdomen, there's a amyloidosis that you're expecting. And the amyloidosis equal to the box that you need to know, my dear, there is a RCM plus NOS plus HS. So what I say, the RCM means the restrictive cardiomyopathy, nephrotic syndrome and the hepatosplenic megaly. So I'm saying the amyloidosis is the rule of M also. M for yes, once again, the myopathy means the cardiomyopathy, restricted cardiomyopathy, and NOS means the nephrotic syndrome, means the massive proteinuria, and third is the megaly, is the hepatosplenic megaly. And fourth M is once again the macroglossia. So in an abdomen station means the GIT that we are expecting in a patient the ankylosing spondylitis, the findings of the amyloidosis, is a hepatosplenomegaly. So we need to be very focused on the hepatosplenomegaly along with the features of nephrotic syndrome. So the nephrotic syndrome, the features we'll have, definitely the leukonychia in your hands that you're expecting. And the second important point, there's an the edema. So these are the two important findings along with the urine dipstick will have the massive proteinuria. So the nephrotic syndrome done. Along with the hepatosplenomegaly that you need to examine the patient to get the liver and to get the spleen. If you found them, putting them together, hepatosplenomegaly, along with that, the nephrotic syndrome, so you can make the diagnosis, the amyloidosis is the complications of ankylosing spondylitis. So you need to examine focusing and keeping them in your mind, then you need to start your examinations, my dear. And you need to be very focused with the findings that I said in the hands that we are expecting for the leukonychia, and the leg for the leg edema, and the anasarta, and also, a side is also the fluid overload, whatever the forms, but the leg edema that we are expecting, sacral edema as well. And along with that, the urine dipstick at the best side for the massive proteinuria. And also the liver and the spleen, then palpations that you need to do, my dear. And along with that, you should palpate the kidneys as well. And of course, that you will do all the steps of abdomen examination, but I will be very focused for the encouraging spondylitis, what the findings that you are expecting, so that we can get the idea in station one abdomen, then what things that you need to focus, my dear, and you need to get the findings in your hands. So let's start by showing whether he has got the leery leukonychia or not. So in the hands that we are looking for the leukonychia, so he doesn't have the leukonychia. So he doesn't have leukonychia. And also no clubbing, and also turn his hands to look for the palma reithema and the dubitrans contracture. So he doesn't have the, any other features of chronic liver disease. Then you need to do all the procedures altogether. But yes, as because we are focusing for the leukonychia, for the, especially for the nephrotic syndrome that we are looking for as due to the hypoalbuminemia, but we are not getting these findings. Means that leukonychia is absent.
So in an inspection that we are looking for the abdomen distended, it's just in fatty abdomen, or maybe the hepatosplenomegaly is there. So it's an inspection findings. But what I'm looking for, we are looking for the leukonychia due to the hypoalbuminemia, and I'm just showing in a non-systematic ways so that you can keep them in your mind so that you can examine all them together in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis. So yes, uh, we are saying here, do you have any pain at your legs? You need to tell him. So he doesn't have the leg edema. So it does mean that he doesn't have the features of diaphoric syndrome. And then you need to do, and you need to keep in your mind that the urine dipstick for the massive protein, right? Then you need to look for. So that's because we found no leukonychia, no leg edema, so the no nephoric syndrome. I'm showing it in non systematic ways just to keep the features in your mind so that you can focus during examination of the abdomen, full ex abdomen examination is my plan. So now I'm focusing on to the abdomen just to give you the idea. This gentleman has got the hepatosplenomegaly. So yes, you need to focus. Once again, you need to put your hands like this and to tell him, just take a deep breath in and out. So yes, once again, once again, once again. So he has got a good hepatomegaly, so you need to confirm it by doing the parkas, tympanic, done, done, it's all been done. So this is the liver dullness and you need to focus on the upper border of the liver dullness. Tap on the chest. So this is the dullness. So is the second, third and this is fourth. So you can put the, the liver is enlarged. So you can feel the liver span is really enlarged as hepatomacally. But the border is not irregular. And the border is not, and also the liver is non-tender. So we, I found this three finger beds, hepatomegaly, which is non-tender, farming consistency. The border is not irregular. It does mean that the border is not irregular, that you are excluding the hepatocellular carcinoma. And non-tender means you are excluding that the congestive cardiac failure. So these two important things that you need to always say, the border is not irregular, and the non-tender, farming consistency, no bruise overlying the mass. So you need to take the stethoscope and hands that with the bell of the stethoscope. Yes. You need to put the stethoscope to see the brewing. So no brew is overlying this mass. So it's just in hepatomegaly, three finger pairs, non-tender, farming consistency, and no brew overlying this mass. So this is hepatomegaly that you found. So yes, my dear, you got a hepatomegaly, and now that you need to focus onto the spleen, then you need to put your hands from here, take a deep breath in and out. So yes, I can, I can, I can, I can feel the anterior border of the spleen as well. Yes. So yes the border of the spleen that I can feel. So this is the splenomegaly, splenomegaly that you found. So you need to do the tap on the, this tympanic, 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 tympanic. So this is done, this is done. So this is the splenomegaly is once again that you found. So once again, that whenever the spleen, spleen you found, with your parkas, and you need to put the stethoscope to see the brew as well. So no brew is overlying this spleen. So immediately after that, you need to look onto the anterior chest, especially the left infraclavicular space, to look for any scar mark or any box underlying them. So the yeah, see the pacemaker, because I said it, the amyloidosis is strongly complicated by, or amyloidosis features is, RCM, restricted cardiomyopathy, and this restricted cardiomyopathy is also treated with the AICD pacemaker sometimes. So you need to look for, there is no AICD pacemaker scar. So I can say that he may have or he may not have the restricted cardiomyopathy. You need to look for by doing the echocardiography test. So my dear, what do you need to do? You need to take the shot and give, give him back once again.
and just cover him up like this and tell him sorry thank you thank you very much means you need to do all the steps whatever you need my dear but the main findings that i need to discuss so that you can get the things keep in your mind focusing on them get the findings in your hands put together make the diagnosis and present your case my dear the way that i'm saying so yes my dear listen very carefully immediately after finishing you need to wash your hands you shouldn't forget it and now listen very carefully if you get my dear a case for the ankylosing spondylitis and abdomen examination think about the diagnosis the first diagnosis the amyloidosis as i said the amyloidosis equal to the rcm plus nos plus hyperosmeromegaly and the macroglossia yes he doesn't have the macroglossia i i'll not show them so my dear listen very carefully as because i have said in a different ways also the m for myopathy amyloidosis m rule the myopathy means the uh, restricted cardiomyopathy M for massive proteinuria means the nephrotic syndrome, and M for megaly means the hepatosplenomegaly. So we are focusing here the findings of the hepatosplenomegaly without the features of nephrotic syndrome, but still that in your hands that, that you can do the urine dipstick for the massive proteinuria. So the presentation should be something like that. You need to tell to your examiner, sir, my clinical diagnosis of this man is amyloidosis, as evidenced by hepatosplenomegaly, three finger pets from the right coastal margin, liver is enlarged and palpable, which is firm in consistency, non-tender, non-pulsatile, and not irregular border, and no bruise overlying the mass. Along with the spleen is four finger pets from the left coastal margin, which is firm in consistency, with the knot in the anterior border, which moves directing towards the right iliac cosa, and dalon percussion, and no bruise overlying the spleen. So putting all them together, I found the hepatosplenomegaly, but I have not found the features of macroglossia. I have not found the features of nephrotic syndrome, as evidenced by the leukonychia, absence of leukonychia, and absence of leg edema. And also, I have found, and I, I, I would like to do the urine dipstick to exclude, or maybe the, to include, the massive proteinuria at the bedside for the urine dipstick for the massive proteinuria. So putting all them together, I, I think this gentleman has got the amyloidosis, which is the secondary complications or the complications from the ankylosing spondylitis. I have seen whenever the, the, uh, he has got the reduced mobility of, uh, of his spine. So, and also having a question mark posture as evidenced by the hyperextension of the cervical joints and also the loss of normal lumbar lordosis. Putting them together, he has got the ankylosing spondylitis. And I have not seen any of the scar mark uh, in, in the left uh, upper chest, uh, in, in the left uh, intracubular space, uh, that does mean that he 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 has not having the AICD pacemaker scar. Maybe he has the restricted cardiomyopathy, but I need to do the test, means the echocardiography or maybe the cardiac MRI, uh, we call it the CMR, to confirm the diagnosis for the restricted cardiomyopathy. So my clinical diagnosis of this gentleman is hepatosplenomegaly, which is consistent with the amyloidosis, which is the complications for the ankylosing spondylitis without the evidence of nephrotic syndrome. I hope that my dear, this interesting case, you enjoyed it and the learning that you learned, my dear, that will be really helpful for in station one, abdomen, if you get the case, something like that. Thank you, thank you very much. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. Station one, respiratory system. You entered in the room that you have seen whenever you put off the dress and you have seen this gentleman has got the question mark posture and which is evidenced by that is the hyperextension of the cervical spine and loss of lumbar lordosis with the restricted movement of the neck and all the whole spine that it made you diagnose ankylosing spondylitis. So now you need to know about if the patient is given to the respiratory station Ankylosing spondylitis, what is the diagnosis? The first diagnosis is a pulmonary fibrosis. And this is predominantly the apical zone. And apical zone is the front of the chest that you need to focus on to the upper chest and the upper apical zones in the front of the chest. And for the basal part, then you need to examine the back of the chest. So the front of the chest, the apical zone, then you need to focus to get the inspiratory crackles. So this is the most important thing that you need to know, my dear. So yes, my dear doctor, just look at him whenever you're just putting off your dress and shirt and you can observe him that the hyperextension of the cervical spine 
and you can see the loss of normal lumbar lordosis and making a question mark posture. It's a sport diagnosis for the ankylosing spondylitis. And if you just tell him, just can you just turn your head on the left side? Now right hand side, right side now? Yes. So you can see some of the restricted movement. So yes, my dear doctor, that I'm very focusing on the respiratory system examination. You will do every, everything, my dear. Starting examination from the foot end, then the 45 degree angle and exposure, everything you do, my dear, all the deep bundle packs, everything you do. But the focusing onto the is because you found that he has got the ankylosing spondylitis, so that you focus onto the apical joint fibrosis. Why not the fibrosis is concerned? Then you need to look at the hands to exclude the clubbing, my dear. This is very much important. So at least that we need to see the hands for the clubbing. Can you show me your hands? So in the hands that we are looking for the leukonychia, so he doesn't have the leukonychia. So he doesn't have leukonychia and also no clubbing, and also turn his hands to look for the palma reitema and the dubitrans contracture. So he doesn't have the, any other features of chronic liver disease. Then you need to do all the procedures altogether. But yes, as because we are focusing for the leukonychia, for the, especially for the nephrotic syndrome that we are looking for as due to the hypoalbuminemia, but we are not getting these findings. Means the leukonychia is absent. So yes, I've seen that he has no clubbing, yes. One of the most important talk might in respiratory system examination, that is the respiratory system starts with the C, P and B as via, with the chest expansion, percussion note, and breath, and the B, C, P and B as for the breath sound and the, and the vocal resonance. So all the things that you do, but the errors of the crackles, my dear, you need to focus. You need to show the apical zone having all the features are getting down. I mean the C for the chest is getting down on the apical zone rather than the mid zone and the lower zone. You need to show them. So let's see. Just can you do like this for me? And you need to hold it here. Just put your hands and tell him. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK, SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations, 500 plus hours video lectures, 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole life. Man. Turn your head on the left side, sir. You see that his is really unable to move, so the apical joints is really less movement. So you need to show that the apical joints having really elastic, restricted movement of the chest expansion is really reduced. So tell him take a deep breath in and out for me, sir. Once again. So you see the chest movement is really reduced. And we say that the ankylosing spondylitis, usually normal person with the chest expansion is more than 2.5 centimeter, but he has less than 2.5 centimeter, so the reduced chest expansion. Immediately after that, the C, then the P and the percussion knot that you need to show him, that the apical zones having the dull percussion knot. So you need to tell him, sir, just turn your head on the left side, you need to put your hands there, and this is dull, you see the dull, dull sound, once again, dull sound, but here is a tympani, tympani, tympani. Tympani, tympani, or resonant, you can say the resonant rather than the tympani, resonant sound. So C, percussion is the dull and the apical zone especially, and then the breath sound. And you need to take the stethoscope and put the stethoscope once again here. And stethoscope with the bell, with the bell. So you need to put the stethoscope here and you tell him, take a deep breath in and out. Once again, 
the breath sound also reduced once again sir once again you need to turn around like this along with that you need to listen now the added sound once again i can listen the inspiratory crackles here once again sir thank you thank you very much so i can listen the inspiratory crackles on the apical jones the added sound so cp and bsb are with the chest function reduced percussion are dull and the breath sound diminished or getting down and the vocal resonance also getting down i have not shown here and you need to just put the stress group like the way the 99 and the added sound the inspiratory crackles that we found so we found the crackles inspiratory crackles predominantly apical zone and without clubbing so definitely the pulmonary fibrosis is consistent or is the complications for the ankylosing spondylitis and you need to also put the stress cone to the back and going the examination and showing them there is no or less crackles in the basal zones as well so yes my dear doctor that immediately after finishing your examinations uh, whenever you felt that you finished your examination you need to do all the steps that whatever is instructed in other video clips for the respiratory system examination you need to do that and you need to wash your hands definitely finishing your examination and of course you need to tell them how you are finishing the examinations here yes my dear doctor what will be the presentation that's really important you need to present your case the way that i'm saying my dear you need to tell that my clinical diagnosis of this man is pulmonary fibrosis as evidenced by the chest expansion is reduced predominantly over the apical zones and as well as the percussion rate is dull along with that the breath sound is diminished and the vocal resonance is diminished and also there is an inspiratory crackles that i found over the both apical zones predominantly over the both apical zones of the both lungs without having the clubbing nicotinic staining and other findings altogether so this is consistent with the pulmonary fibrosis and this pulmonary fibrosis is complicated by the respiratory failure if the features soft the oxygen means the hypo hypoxia means as evidenced by the cyanosis but i found there is no cyanosis right at this moment and also this is not complicated by right heart failure means a core pulmonary as evidenced by the leg edema absence of leg edema and this gentleman is not on steroid as the absence of any steroid stigma at the peripheral side and this pulmonary fibrosis the underlying etiology is encouraging spondylitis as i have seen this gentleman has got the question mark posture as evidenced by the hyperextension of the cervical spine and loss of normal lumbar lordosis with a protuberant abdomen so it's consistent with encouraging spondylitis so underlying etiology of pulmonary fibrosis is apical joint pulmonary fibrosis is ankylosing spondylitis i would like to confirm my diagnosis by doing the hrct test along with the pulmonary function test and also if needed that sometimes the mri is really more sensitive to detect the apical joint fibrosis i hope that my dear the findings and the expectations and the anticipations of ankylosing spondylitis the apical joint fibrosis that you think and you put and you focus over there you'll get the diagnosis in your hands my dear i hope that this is the these important tips and tricks will be really helpful in your real exams my dear i hope that you enjoy thank you thank you very much so this is station 3 cardiology station 3 cardiology my dear you entered in the room that you have seen whenever you put off the dress put off the shirt then you felt this gentleman has got the restricted spine movement along with the question mark posture and there is a hyperextension of the cervical spine and on the loss of normal lumbar lordosis is consistent with the ankylosing spondylitis whenever you have seen the ankylosing spondylitis my dear you need to know what the findings or what the complications from the ankylosing spondylitis that can be happening in cardiovascular system that are 
you are given this patient in a cardiovascular patient in a cardiovascular system station 3. So you need to know for the encouraging spondylitis, the rule of A, once again, A for the AV nodal block. It can be primary, it can be secondary. So in that case, in your real examination, you can get and you can expect a small scar, a small box, maybe the pacemaker box or the pacemaker for the third degree AV block. And secondly, the aortic regurgitation. This is very much important. The findings that we are expecting in a pulse that we will get the high volume collapsing pulse. And then in the blood pressure from the starting of the pulse and then the blood pressure, we are expecting to get the white pulse pressure. And this is the severe nature of the severe aortic regurgitation. Immediately after that, in apex bit that we are finding, we are expecting that the displaced thrusting, thrusting R for regurgitation thrusting and displaced apex bit and immediately after that the murmur is really important there is an early diastolic murmur there is a short early diastolic murmur the short early diastolic murmur is a feature of severe aortic regurgitation so here's my idea doctor this is very much important to get the findings all in together making the diagnosis aortic regurgitation means what i'm saying in ankylosing spondylitis cardiovascular system that first of all that you need to think about the first degree second degree third degree AV block third degree AV block is evidenced by the scar mark below a small box for the pacemaker that we are expecting number one and secondly for the aortic regurgitation findings and thirdly restrictive cardiomyopathy restrictive cardiomyopathy will have the apex beat will be the heaving in nature or the apex bit will be thrusting in nature in case of aortic regurgitation or severe aortic regurgitations. So these are the findings that we can expect and for restrictive cardiomyopathy sometimes the AICD pacemaker can be could be given. So in that case a small scar will be a bigger size box for the AICD pacemaker. The AICD pacemaker is a bigger pacemaker box and the normal pacemaker for the third degree block is a smaller size pacemaker. So these are the differences. So yes, my dear doctor, keeping in your mind that we are expecting for the pacemaker for third degree block, pacemaker box or the scar for the RCM and for the ER findings altogether. So what you need to do, we need to examine and I would like to show you here, rather than the systemic ways of examination, I would like to show what findings that we are expecting here. So we need to start from the examination from the hands, my dear. You need to wash your hands, of course. And of course, you need to start from the hands. You need to tell him, so I'd like to examine your pulse. And you need to feel the pulse. And the steps that you need to feel the rate fast, immediately after that, the irregular, the, the atrifibrillation that you're expecting for the mitral lobe disease. And if you're not getting the atrifibrillation with irregular pulse, then the low volume, not low volume, then high volume. Means you're expecting the high volume pulse. So yes, I can feel the high volume pass. So anybody feel the high volume pass, you need to hold it here. And you need to hold it here. And you need to tell him, do you have any pain at the shoulder, sir? No. So you need to see the collapsing pass as well. So yes, I found he has got the high volume collapsing pass. Immediately after that, the most important thing is that you need to focus on the apex bead and the auscultation. And you, you will get the, all the findings of the aortic regurgitation. But the most important thing is the auscultation that you need to do with a good maneuver. You need to make the patient sitting forward or leaning forward with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. You need to hold over the carotids and then you need to examine the aortic regurgitation murmur and now you can see that the, there is no scar mark here no scar mark for the small scar mark is a small pacemaker box for the 30 gb block and no bigger box for the rcm so this is not there and then we can feel the fx weight and these fx weight are here 
Yes, I can feel the apex bit here. A bit of thrusting apex bit. And immediately after that, the auscultation. So you need to auscultate him. So you need to put the stethoscope with leaning forwards. Sir, would you please just sit forward for me? No. Is it okay? No. No, all right. So he will not, he cannot actually be able to sitting forward. So what you need to do, you need to put the stethoscope over the left third intercostal space. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations. 500 plus hours video lectures. 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole lifetime. I need to tell him turn your head on the left side, sir, for me. I need to put the hands left hand over the carotids here. I need to tell him take a deep breath in and out and hold it there. So a closer view that you can see that you need to put the stethoscope here in the left third intercostal is the second, is the third, left third. And you need to put your hands here and you tell him, turn your head on the left side side for me. And now you need to tell him, take a deep breath in, out and hold it there. And I can listen. I can listen the sound. So the faster sound, immediately after the second that sound, there is no single component. The sound is there. So I found a very good mama that is the early diastolic mama that I found, and that is best third in the left third in the space with the with the diaphragm of the stethoscope, with the breath holding after expiration, with the leaning forward, this is most important. As because my my man, my gentleman cannot able to just sit forward, so I need to do and you need to do exam in like the way that I have done. I have done. So this is the one that we found that we found in early diastolic mama, along with the high volume pulse, with the apex B thrusting and also displaced. So diagnosis is severe aortic regurgitation without having evidences of AV block, without having evidences of restrictive cardiomyopathy. So you need to present your case the way that I'm saying, my dear. you need to do all the steps, whatever you need for the cardiovascular system examinations, my dear. You need to present your case like the way that I'm saying. My clinical diagnosis of this man, of this gentleman is severe aortic regurgitation, as evidenced by the high volume collapsing pulse and thrusting displaced apex bit along with the short early diastolic mama. And this severe aortic regurgitation is not complicated by left heart failure as evidenced by absence of lung crackles and also not complicated by the right heart failure as evidenced by the absence of leg edema. And also this gentleman severe aortic regurgitations is not complicated by infective endocarditis as evidenced by the absence of all the peripheral stigma of infective endocarditis. I'd like to and putting all them together my clinical diagnosis of this gentleman is severe aortic regurgitation. So I'd like to show his spine so you can see the cervical spine is hyperextension and also the loss of normal lumbar lordosis. So you can see a question mark posture that the gentleman have. So yes, 
there's nothing but the congestion the encouraging spondylitis that he has so now let's see he will walk for me just walk and also i have seen this gentleman also having the restricted movement of the spine and also having the question mark posture as evidenced by the hyperextension of the cervical spine and loss of normal lumbar lordosis which is consistent with the ankylosing spondylitis so with the ankylosing spondylitis is complicated by the severe aortic regurgitation so this severe aortic regurgitation the underlying etiology is ankylosing spondylitis so putting all them together my clinical diagnosis of this gentleman is severe aortic regurgitation due to ankylosing spondylitis without evidence of heart failure and without evidence of infective endocarditis i'd like to confirm my diagnosis by requesting a color doppler echocardiography that gives an idea of aortic regurgitation and the severity of this aortic regurgitation and the examiners will ask you the other questions the, the similar ways that you need to tell them that the cardiovascular complications of ankylosing spondylitis are of course the first one as i say the first degree second degree third degree every block that can be evident by yes the bradycardia in the pulse and also the pacemaker and the second complication the aortic regurgitation that the findings that we found here and the third is the restrictive cardiomyopathy as the complications for the amyloidosis and restricted cardiomyopathy yes once again the apex beat will be the healing in nature and all them that you need to confirm the diagnosis by doing the different tests including the echocardiography x-ray ecg and maybe the sometimes we need the cardiac mri for the cardiomyopathies so yes my dear this is very much important tips and tricks you enter in the room that you have seen the encarnation monolithis you think of that this can be the possibility so you need to focus so that you can make the diagnosis on your hands otherwise it's really impossible my dear i hope that my dear getting the clues and think of what will be the diagnosis and what will be the focusing points that you can and you get the findings in your hands putting them together make the diagnosis saying the examiner presently the way that i presented that is the best tips and tricks my dear you'll do the best and i hope that you enjoy thank you thank you very much